Uh, SF-2209 requires all physical or mental health plans offered by insurers who operate in Minnesota to include what the bill authors call gender-affirming care, which the policy states must now be designated as medically necessary. SF-2209 further clarifies and expands last year's statutory inclusion of state taxpayer-funded insurance of so-called gender-affirming care. Last year, a Forbes reporter noted how longitudinal data collected and analyzed by public health authorities in Finland, Sweden, and England have concluded that the risk-benefit ratio of pharmaceutical and surgical interventions for youth in this way ranges from unknown to unfavorable. Finland, Sweden, the UK, and Norway are shifting toward a less medicalized approach that addresses possible psychiatric comorbidities and explores developmental etiology. The Dutch newspaper AD quoted Thomas Steensma, one of the researchers of the famed Dutch Protocol, who said, little research has been done on treatment with puberty blockers and hormones in young people. This is why it is also seen as experimental. The WPATH files released on March 4th Monday, show how WPATH has misled the medical community, all while leading insurance companies and legislatures with its protocols. Will SF-2209 cover folks who are seeking to detransition? They have great difficulty receiving care. In short, there is lack of consensus within the global medical community on how to treat minors, and the USA is behind our European neighbors in this understanding. When we consider this division, forcing all insurers to pay for this is misguided, and forcing all state taxpayers to pay for so-called gender-affirming care is coercion. Children cannot give informed consent on treatment that alters or potentially removes their sexual or reproductive health. For that reason, I'm asking you to vote no on SF-2209, and thank you for your...